My name is Sudhi. Today I'm trying to cover some key things to remember before your AWS examination. This is a last minute preparation video before you write your AWS Solution Architect Associate exam. If someone is new to AWS, I would suggest you to take a training course before you watch this video. This video is created just to revise a few key things to remember before you go for your exam. I have covered most of the common important sections from where most of the questions are coming from. I am reminding again, this video is created as a final recap of what we have learned and I will try to explain how the questions will be coming on your exam. I have also included some links in the description box below to try some free practice tests online. This is not a practice exam provided by AWS. If you are watching my videos for the first time, please support and subscribe my channel. Let's get started. some important scenarios which you can expect in your exam for storage and database section. These are the main storage options available in AWS. Amazon Instant Store, Amazon Simple Storage Service or S3 and Glacier for archiving, Elastic Block Store and Amazon Elastic File Systems. And for databases we have Amazon Relational Databases RDS, Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon Aurora and Redshift. Please note down each key points I am going to explain on next few slides so that you can have a look before you enter the exam hall. You can also download this slide from the link below which I have mentioned in this description box. Amazon S3 is highly durable and available by itself. Amazon S3 guarantees 4 nines availability and 9 nines durability. 4 nines availability means which is 99.99 and 9 nines means 99.9999 times. Cross region replication can be enabled for S3 anytime. But if you already had some objects in a bucket, when you enable the cross region replication, only newly added objects will be replicated. Another important thing to remember is versioning is a prerequisite for enabling cross region replication. There will be at least two questions in the exam based on lifecycle policy. To answer these questions, you will need to know what are the differences between S3 standard, S3 standard infrequent access and S3 Glacier. S3 standard is for general purpose storage for frequently accessed data. On the other hand, S3 standard IA is nothing but it is suitable for infrequently accessed files but requires a rapid access when they need it. It is cheaper than S3 standard. Amazon Glacier is the cheapest storage option and it is used for archiving the data for 7 to 10 years or longer to meet regulatory compliance or requirements for some organizations. Normal retrieval time for Glacier storage is within 12 hours. It's not instant. But there are options available for expedited retrieval with an extra fee and which will be in minute. When we talk about Amazon Glacier, another important point to remember is, unlike S3, you won't be able to upload an object to Glacier directly from the console. But we can use API or lifecycle policies to put that put data into Glacier. There are two more storage that are available in S3, which are S3 One Zone Infrequent Access Storage and S3 Glacier Deep Archive Storage. For the exam, you don't have to worry about these two types of storage storages, but it's worth looking at AWS documentation. Let's move on to a sample question. The company needs to upload videos and these are accessed frequently for first 30 days. Then it is accessed only once in a while. After 12 months, the video will never be accessed but will need it for auditing purpose. What is the best option in this scenario? Here, the video is accessed frequently for the first 30 days. That means it should be stored in Amazon S3 standard for 30 days. Then it is accessed only once in a while. So that means it can be moved to Amazon S3 infrequent access storage. And after 12 months, the video will never be accessed. That means you can move that video to Glacier, which is still available for auditing purpose. So the answer is mentioned here. Store videos in S3 standard and set a lifecycle policy to move 
to S3 standard IA after 30 days. Then move to Glacier after 12 months. Let's move on to another question. A travel website is using S3 to store high definition images uploaded by their clients. You have noticed the images from the S3 buckets are used on third party blogs and websites using the URL. As a solution architect, how will you stop this? In S3, there is an option to use pre-signed URL to avoid unwanted access to the website images shared using the web link. The pre-signed URLs are valid only for a specific duration. In the actual examination, you can expect a question with a similar sort of idea. Another thing is Origin Access Identity OAI, which is used to maintain a secure access to the files in S3 that you service serve through CloudFront. CloudFront is a fast content delivery network to improve the website latency. It securely delivers data, videos, applications from the closest point of presence. Amazon Athena is an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data in Amazon S3 using standard SQL. Athena is serverless, so there is no infrastructure to manage it. And you're paying only for the queries that you run. Most results are delivered within seconds. Amazon Glue is a fully managed extract, transform, and load service that makes it easier for customers to prepare load their data to the analysis software. Athena is always integrated with AWS. This is the point to note for the exam. Athena is integrated with AWS Glue to make an easy data analysis tool. Let's move on to the next topic. Let's talk about block level storage EBS. You can expect few questions from this section. The key idea is to remember is the difference between all of the EBS volume types. I have highlighted few points in red here for your reference. There are four types of Amazon EBS volume. EBS provisioned IOPS SSD, EBS general purpose SSD, throughput optimized HDD and cold HDD. Please try to remember the short code for each volume types. For example, for EBS provisioned IOPS SSD is IO1. For throughput optimized HDD is ST1. The first key point to remember is use cases of each of the volume types. EBS provisioned IOPS SSD is used for IO intensive workloads such as NoSQL, DynamoDB and relational databases. EBS general purpose SSD is a bit cheaper than the previous one. It is mainly used for low latency interactive applications. Both of the HDD options are basically used for data warehousing and archiving respectively. Another thing to remember is the maximum IOPS per volume for EBS provision IOPS SSD and ABS general purpose SSD. You can expect questions from this section as well. EBS provision IOPS SSD maximum IOPS per volume is 64,000 whereas in EBS general purpose SSD is 16,000. Let's take a look at the sample question. You are setting up a cost-effective architecture for an application which has intensive workloads require 42,000 IOPS. The application should be hosted in an on-demand EC2 instance in your VPC. Which of the following is the most suitable EBS volume type to use with this scenario? Answer is IO1 because it is the IOPS optimized EBS volume. It can give up to 64,000 IOPS per volume. You can expect similar sort of questions in your exam. Let's move on to the next topic. EBS is highly durable and available in region, but if that region fails, the data loss because it's not replicating between the regions. There is a remedy for this. You can create a snapshot and copy to another region for disaster recovery. Please try to remember this key point. You can't enable cross-region replication in EBS, but the only way is to create a snapshot and copy to another region manually. Let's move on to EFS. EFS is simple, scalable, fully managed elastic file system, which can be used with all the AWS cloud services and on-premise resources. 
It is built to scale to petabytes without disrupting the application. One EFS can connect to multiple services. I am reading the last point one more time. One EFS can connect to multiple services. This point is important for the exam. Let's take a look on a sample question. A content management system is hosted on a fleet of auto-scaled on-demand EC2 instances which use Amazon Aurora as its database. Currently, the system stores the file documents that the users uploaded in one of the attached EBS volumes. Your manager noticed that the system performance is quite slow and he has instructed you to improve the architecture of the system. In this scenario, what will you do to implement a scalable high throughput file system? The answer is using EFS. Let's move on to the next topic. A bit of introduction about RDS and Amazon Aurora. RDS is a relational database sitting in the cloud. Six familiar database engine to choose from as mentioned in the slide. No need for infrastructure provisioning and no need for installing and maintaining database software. Remember the use cases. RDS is used when the database is having a schema, joins, etc. To make RDS highly available, multi-availability zone feature can be enabled. We'll talk about Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora is a MySQL and Postgres compatible relational database. Amazon Aurora is up to five times faster than standard MySQL database and three times faster than standard PostgreSQL database. Amazon Aurora replicate across three availability zones by default. Read replicas to another region can be enabled for better performance and the latency will be less than 100 milliseconds when it is enabled. There will be questions regarding Amazon Aurora and the multi-availability zone feature of RDS. Let's have a look. Sample question. An application is deployed in a fleet of spot EC2 instances and uses a MySQL RDS database instances running in one availability zone. You need to ensure high availability and scalability. Which of the following performs synchronous data replication in RDS? Answer is enable RDS database instance running in a multi availability zone deployment. Let's move on to the next one. Before we go to the next question, just a reminder Amazon Aurora is capable to deploy in more than two availability zones by default. This is the key point to remember before answering these sort of questions. Let's have a look. As a solution architect, you have been requested to set up highly available application in AWS with a database must be in three availability zones. Which of the following can help you accomplish this goal? Only Amazon Aurora is capable to deploy in more than two availability zones. So if there is an answer, DynamoDB, RDS, or Redshift, please ignore. The answer is Amazon Aurora. Next topic is DynamoDB. Amazon DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service offered from AWS Cloud. DynamoDB cannot be used if the database has some schemas and joins. DynamoDB can support up to 20 million requests per second and 10 trillion requests per day. Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator is an add-on service used to tune the DynamoDB for better performance. Understand the common use cases of DynamoDB. This will help you to answer the scenario-based questions. Common use cases are database for shopping carts, storing JSON or CSV or any other structured data files, inventory tracking and fulfillment applications, and customer profiles and accounts databases. Let's check a sample question. A game is using DynamoDB as the database and to improve the game's performance, which AWS service can be used. 
So the answer is DynamoDB Accelerator, which can reduce the response times from milliseconds to microseconds. Let's check another one. Your manager has asked you to set up a web application that can collect votes for a popular TV competition. Billions of users will submit votes and must be collected real time and stored into a highly scalable and highly available database, which is the best service you should use for this scenario. Because this data is structured and without much complicated schema or joins, DynamoDB is the perfect solution. Amazon Elastic Cache is another topic from where you can expect at least one question. Amazon Elastic Cache is a web service that make it easy to deploy, operate, scale and in-memory data store or cache in the cloud. The service improves the performance of a web application by allowing you to retrieve the information from fast managed in-memory data stores instead of relying on instead of relying entirely on slower disk based databases. Here is an example question for Amazon Elastic Cache. A startup based in Spain is deploying a web application and wants to store their most frequently used data in an in-memory data store to improve the response time of their web application. Which of the following is the most suitable web service to use for this requirement? In this question, the keyword is in-memory data store to improve the response time of their web application. The best option will be Amazon Elastic Cache. Next topic is EC2. Amazon Elastic Computer Cloud is a web service that provides secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. EC2 is a very important topic for the examination. You can expect questions based on the course model and instance type. It is important to understand how to select the instance type and the course model based on the requirements. The comparison chart on this slide will give you a better idea about the course models. There are four types of pricing model based on the capacity needs. On demand, reserved, spot instance and dedicated instances. With on-demand instance, you pay for compute capacity by the hour or second depending on the instance you run. No longer term commitments or up upfront payments are needed. You can increase or decrease your computer capacity depending on the demands of your application and only pay for the specified hourly rate for the instance you use. The second type is reserved model. Reserved instances provide you with a significant discount up to 75% compared to the on-demand instance pricing. Reserved instances are recommended for the applications with steady state usage or applications that may require reserved capacity. Customers that can commit to using EC2 over 1-3 to three years term and it reduces their total compu computing cost. The third model is Sport Instances. A sport instance is unused EC2 instance that is available for less than the on-demand pricing. Because sport instances enable you to request unused EC2 instance at steep discount and you can lower your Amazon EC2 cost significantly. The hourly price for a sport instance is called spot price. Spot instances are recommended for applications that have flexible start and end times. The last type is dedicated instances. Dedicated instances are Amazon EC2 instances that run in VPC. Dedicated instances are Amazon EC2 instances that hardware is dedicated to a single customer. This can be used for application with highly sensitive workloads. Let's check a sample question. A solution architect is designing a stateful web application that will run for one year, 24/7, and will be decommissioned. Load on this platform will be constant. What is the most cost effective way to purchase a compute for this platform? Answer is standard reserve instances. Reserve instances provide you with a significant discount compared to the on-demand discount pricing when you reserve it. AWS Lambda lets you run a code without provisioning or managing servers. You pay only for the compute time you consume. You can invoke Amazon Lambda function over HTTPS. This is where we use API Gateway integrated with Amazon Lambda. When you send an HTTP request to the API endpoint, the Amazon 
API Gateway Service invokes corresponding Lambda function. You can use Amazon S3 to trigger AWS Lambda to process data immediately after an upload. For example, you can use Amazon to convert the full image to thumbnail or transcode a video, indexing files, processing log files, validating the content, aggregate and filter the data in real time. It is important for the exam to understand the use cases of AWS Lambda and it is available in the AWS documentation. Next topic is ECS. Amazon Elastic Container Service is a fully managed container orchestration service. For the Solution Architect Associate exam, you don't have to learn much deeper about ECS. But only thing to remember is ECS supports Fargate to provide serverless compute for containers. Fargate removes the need of provisioning and managing servers and let you specify and pay for the resource per application. Also, it improves the security through application isolation by design. VPC is a broad topic. For that, you need to invest some serious time to understand all the concepts. As a recap for the examination, I am not going through each and everything from VPC, but few important things are noted for your understanding. First thing is, each availability zone needs separate subnets. Two different availability zones cannot be reside in one subnet. The next thing to note, you need to understand the concept of public and private subnet and it is for sure there will be questions based on this. Remember, database will be always in private subnet and a NAT gateway is required for private subnet to connect to the internet or other AWS services but it prevents the internet from initiating a connection with those instances residing in the private subnet. Please note that NAT gateway always reside in a public subnet. Elasticity is the ability to fit the resources needed to cope with the loads dynamically, whereas the scalability is the ability of a system to accommodate larger loads. Normally load balancer is used for elasticity. Scalability can be based on the suitable policies attached to the auto scaling group. For example, CPU load. From this section, you may get a question based on cooldown period. What is the need of cooldown period? The cooldown period helps to ensure that your auto scaling group doesn't launch or terminate additional instances before the previous scaling activity takes effect. I have seen a common question in many exams based on the planned upcoming promotion for a product or service. In this promotional period, the load will rapidly increase and which will cause a bottleneck for a short period of time when the auto scaling kick in. The best way to tackle this situation is by scaling it manually before the promotional period starts. Don't confuse between CloudWatch and CloudTrail. CloudWatch collects monitoring and operational data in the form of logs, metrics and events providing you with a unified view of AWS resources, applications and services. CloudTrail provides even history of your AWS account activity, including actions taken through AWS Management Console, AWS SDKs, command line tools, and other AWS services. Let's have a look on a sample question. A solution architect is designing a solution that can monitor memory and disk space utilization for all Amazon EC2 instances running in Amazon Linux and Windows. Which solution meets this requirement? There are four options. Now, I will let you find the answer for this question. For AWS Solution Architect Associate Exam, you may hardly get a question based on SQSQ, but if there is one, it will be regarding the auto-scaling option based on the number of SQSQ messages. The number of messages in the SQS queue are monitored and a policy can be created with the threshold number of messages to push the auto scaling group to scale up or down. Next topic is IAM. IAM is also a broader topic which you need to learn in detail by hands-on labs. Here are some important common headlines I would like you to have a look. 
user access control. Use multi-factor authentication for further security. I am users to ensure with least privilege, disabling the root access key for I am user and the I am roles. I am is a very broad and important topic for the exam and I know it is sad that I cannot provide you some shortcut for this topic. It is because I prefer you to do some hands-on to learn more about I am. But let's check a sample question. A company needs to deploy services to an AWS region which they have not previously used. The company currently has AWS Identity and Access Management role for the Amazon EC2 instances which permits the instance to have the Amazon DynamoDB. The company wants the EC2 instances in the new region to have the same privileges. How should the company achieve this? There is an IAM role already attached to the current EC2 instances in the current region. The same IAM role can be used to the Amazon EC2 instances in the new region. Let's talk about the encryptions in S3. There are two types of encryptions in S3, server-side and client-side encryption. In server-side encryption, it is further divided into three, SSE S3, SSE KMS and SSE C. It is important to note down for the server-side encryptions. SSE S3 means server-side encryption with the Amazon S3 managed keys. SSE KMS is server-side encryption with customer master keys stored in AWS KMS service. And the last one is SSE C, which is another type of server-side encryption with customer provides a key. Next is client-side encryption. Client-side encryption is happening at client level. If the data in transit needs to be encrypted, the client-side encryption is preferred. Now we have covered the most important topics and question patterns for the AWS Solution Architect Associate exam. Prepare well and take some mock tests before you attend the actual exam. Free practice tests are available from the links below. If you want to download this slide, I have included another link in the description box below. I know this is a short video recap, but I hope this helps at least few of you. And I wish you all the best for your examination. Thank you.